This is Party Poker Premier League Poker 5. For the first time ever, the event is being held in the City of Music, Vienna. There are two spots left in the main event, which will be filled by two global qualifiers. It's the opportunity of a lifetime and a chance for them to play alongside the world's greatest poker stars. This is how the qualifying stage is structured. There are two global qualifying events, each made up of 12 players from around the world. Each qualifier is divided into two groups of six. The groups play one heat with the top three players going through to a final table. The last man standing on each global qualifier final wins a place in the Premier League main event. The global qualifying event one heats have played out. This is what happened as three players from each group progress through to our event one final table. Cards in the air here at Premier League Poker 5. You're only showing aces. Unlucky for me. Get my chips in good, that's all I can do. For Feldman, he has to have these hold or else he's out. And there it is, king. This could be all for Andrew Feldman. Ace. It's certainly Love. dire. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Coleman's all in. Oh! oh. 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 How much does that mean? Oh, that's how much? painful. Wow. Just four players left. This is it, the official bubble, and Bodo's on it. Uh oh. Oh, and Franklin, well, he had a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons to fold, but none with the two kings. This might be over. That's it. That's it for Bodo. That's, that's the bubble, Jesse. These six players will play down to three. Peterson knows this is his Premier League poker, and Giovanni Rizzo knows his is going to get a lot easier if the threes hold. Door slam shut on the okay. Dane. First That's out, funny. but certainly leaving a memorable burning impression. Ollie. It's such a strange play, isn't it? My call. He's hit it to five. And that's the end for the Enigma. And we're going to be down to four. Oh, oh wow. sh sh gee whiz. He'll be delighted to see oh, what I, he's I up called. against. We're looking at the end here. Unless it comes a seven, yeah. Rizzo will be through. Lelouch will be through. Molbeck will be through. Zyder will be out of here. Peter Molbeck, 922,000 will make him the chip leader when these Heat B qualifiers join the Heat A for event number one, global qualifier, final table of Premier League Poker number five. What a golden opportunity. A poker dream of the lifetime for these six players, one of whom is gonna be joining the main draw of Premier League Poker five and Peter Molbeck there. Chip leader, 922,000. Matthew Franklin, very strong. The short stacks, of course, Gamilla and Rizzo, happy to have squeaked through. There is your chip leader, the local player, the Austrian Peter Molbeck, and you can just see the, the tension on these faces. Even a guy like Anthony Lelouch, who at this table would be the, the man who's played the biggest games, who's had so much experience at playing the highest competition. Even he feels the tension, and for him, getting through this main Premier League draw would be massive. The winner here going through to Group A of Premier League Poker 5, joining the likes of Tony G, Luke Schwartz, Seidel, Kachilov, Tom Dwan, and of course that prize pool, which is well over a million dollars. Over $2 million, dollars, to be fair. 12, Lelouch, in Heat B, was so aggressive, basically didn't pick up a hand uh, the entirety of the Heat, and that didn't stop him from amassing a pretty fair stack. His main competition might be this man right here, Matthew Franklin, who did not put a foot wrong in coming through as chip leader from Heat number A. My guess, Franklin knows more about Lelouch than vice versa. Franklin the Brit comes from the stable of guys like Mormon, Cody, John Ames. He knows how to play. But Lelouch there, the raise, the continuation bet, and picking up where he left off from the heat stages doesn't need cards to take down pots. His timing was so impeccable and he feasts on putting other players under pressure. Of course, this final table being a pure winner-take-all format should give each of these players courage that they're gonna have to stick their chips in. 
joined by Andrew Feldman, who watched Heat B alongside me and was playing in Heat A. And Andrew, you know a bit about this Tretikoff. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, I don't think I want a single plot against him. That red sweater, been kind of a warning. Raise and uh, we'll see how he does. Lelouch, two pots, two raises. This, not exactly a premium hand, but very playable. And Molbeck's not going to fall Call. this hand. Call. One thing we knew about Molbeck, he seems to need cards to do well, but he got them in fistfuls during his heat. And here again, okay. the trend continues, top pair. As Lelouch and Molbeck came from the, the same heat, That's Lelouch has got, 000. in my view, a pretty good idea of how Molbeck plays. And this would likely Call. be the last chips he puts in this pot. Unless he's unlucky enough to hit a king. You <laughs> see that heavy stare by Lelouch. Uh, he knows what's going on. Very successful playing post flop against Molbeck in their heat was Lelouch. And we'll see three, if that continues. This is an interesting line from Molbeck. Check call the flop, lead the turn. And not even that can get an extra chip from the Frenchman stack. But Molbeck, who started this final as chip leader, now extends that lead and is not far away from one million in chips, 950 plus thousand. There are, however, 3.6 million in play, so still a long way to go for each of these. Format today, similar to the heat stages in that 18 hands will be played per level. But the heat's finished on, in some cases, the 10 and 20,000 stage, and the other case, 7 and 15,000. Blinds now rolled back to 3 and 6,000. So for someone like Giovanni Rizzo, who was finishing up on about 20 big blinds, he now has the luxury of having over 50. Here comes Gomilla, who started off very well in his heat A and then just managed to squeak through, but a very steady player and probably of the mind to loosen up now, realizing that nothing but first place will do. To raise 31,000. Little squeeze here by Franklin. This is purely done on the basis of position cards don't matter. And if he's testing Gomilla, and Franklin knows that this guy can be picked on. This is what chip leaders do. And those are the actions of a guy who knows what the story is, Matthew Franklin. He's got to get every chip and is going to make his marginal plays in position and with the re-raises. But in a sense, Giovanni Rizzo is the guy who's been here before. Yeah, that's or true. Think back to the but global qualifying time. stages Nobody's of Premier League this. Poker <laughs> 4, and Giovanni Rizzo was the massive chip leader with three left and one seat available. And it was uh, Giovanni Safina, his good friend, who managed to take that spot away and then go on to a final table finish in Premier League Poker 4. But Rizzo, in those 18 months since, has really become a top figure on the European scene. Big winner online, he's played lots on television, a lot of big tournaments around the European Poker Tour, the World Poker Tour. And we've got action here. Franklin's opened this. This is pretty much the best cards Franklin's seen so far. But with the three bet from Molbeck, the question is, does he want to peel off a flop? And there's your answer. 
people who played with Moldek when he got aggressive paid the price. This is a man who has it when he bets. He's been around, Peter Moldek. You look at his live results, they stretch back over 12 years, mostly in Austria, a few in Germany. And obviously, he does a bit on the internet. That's how he qualified for this tournament. But easily, this is Peter Moldek's biggest stage of his poker career by a long way. And what a story it would be if he was to come through and get in the Premier League final. Set to raise 32,000. Well, that's a very, very strong three, but I, I, we obviously know it's not getting through. Um, as we see that this Russian has uh, the pocket tens, but he obviously feels he's going to be able to outplay and post flop. So this should be interesting how this, this pot develops. Well, Franklin is obviously, you, you know, because of the blogs and things like that, he's had a look at the kind of hands Tretikoff was playing. Yeah, yep, for he, sure. For sure. And he feels he's going to take it. I mean, like any ace, king, queen, he's going to obviously bet. And he's in position uh, that they're quite deep. But it's a very, very weak hand to be doing it with. For 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 Tretikoff, we um, wow. we think he's very unpredictable. Very unpredictable. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what he's up to betting this flop. Um, Check call. Yeah. Is, is is would be very standard here. Yeah, for definitely. Um, because like Franklin is is just never gonna. I mean, never. Pff, well, Franklin may make a mo move here because he's got the gut shot, um, but I think he's just gonna let this go. Which he does. And one thing about Tretikoff, he doesn't speak English very well. He doesn't speak much at all at the table. His presence so imposing. And he just seems to manage to get the pots through. The winner here going through to Group A. We already know who's going to be in Group A of Premier League Poker 5. You're talking about guys like Luke Schwartz, Phil Locke. Uh, Tom Dwan, Tony G. It's it's not only some of the best poker players in the world, but the biggest talkers. That group A, whoever's going to get through here is going to be abused. They're going to be mentally abused. Uh, they're going to be absolutely picked on as far as poker goes. It's going to be a huge test of character for the guy who gets through here. Yeah, for sure. You're going to meet, like you say, they're, they're, they're big uh, personalities, and that's certainly not going to be easy to be playing against. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a big, big, big challenge, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to... Well. And yet, at the same time, it's the dream of a poker player, isn't it? I mean, oh my gosh, and this wow. is the other dream of Lelouch. a poker player. Unfortunately for Lelouch, he's not going to get too much action here because they're, they're, they're not... The, these king, queens and king jacks are not strong enough hands to, to be calling three bets with, so... That said, this is kind of a classic squeeze situation, so is there any chance that, you know, Gomilla, who's who feels a little picked on already, I the last time he opened the pot, he did get three bet by Franklin. Yeah, but I would definitely say, um, since when he was playing my he just doesn't like to be calling, he will not be calling with King Jack. It's whether Rizzo, Rizzo's the one who's possibly more likely, but as we see, they both snap fold, so... Um, Lelouch will be slightly unhappy not to pick up any action, but they just were, 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 were no hands. And, you know, sometimes it's just still nice just to pick up those chips uncontested. It's going to be a really interesting dynamic with, between Lelouch and the other players, primarily because, uh, because of the situation with players finding out after the heats have been over what the hands were. Guys like Giovanni Rizzo, who came off of the heat B table thinking, I did pretty good to get through, then found out that Lelouch just had owned him. We saw it. Yeah. You know, hand after hand after hand. And Rizzo went to bed uh, that night and... <laughs> came up with a new plan for Lelouch. Apparently so, yeah. And, you know, from what you've watched with Lelouch, uh, Andrew Feldman, wouldn't wouldn't you say the strategy against him is you can't give him an opportunity to outplay you? I mean, isn't that the idea? You have to be very careful. Exactly, yeah. If, if you're going to be if you're going to be playing a pot against him aggressively, you just have to you have to be going with it. You can't be giving. You can't be opening the door to be to get you getting yourself hanged because 
Well, as we see here, um, Gomilla now in the big, big blind with Kings, but he won't be getting be getting any action as we see Franklin here with the Queen Ten of Diamonds and and the three bit out of the big blind looks super strong so I'm going to imagine Franklin's just going to fold this although he does have chips but it's just not really a hand you want to be calling a three bet with also being in position uh, I, I mean yeah I know but I mean we, we you know he played in Gomilis he doesn't get too out of line pre-flop I mean this is very loose if he does make wow He's gone for the four bet. He's gone for the four this bet. Is, this is crazy. Well, he he's going to get his answer pretty quick well, because... Uh, he might not. He might not. Camilla may just flat call here. Is there a reason for Camilla to flat call? What's Definitely. that? The reason is you, you un under under rep your hand and, you know, and you, you just would never look like you've got kings here if you, if you just flat call. Personally, I don't see Camilla doing it. I think he's going to make it like 120,000, personally. But. And, 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 and I mean, the reason for making the five bet is you're kind of thinking, well, listen, if the guy's got ace, king, or two queens, I can get all the chips exactly, in now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 and also, if he's got like a rag ace, a suited ace, you don't want to give him a free chance to, to get outdrawn, as we see Camilla's, Camilla's going um, right back at him. Um, so. Yeah, as we see, he's going to make it like 140 here. Well, I'm as yeah. positive as you that this is going to end things, but the the idea that Franklin did go for the four bet there and the fact that he has uh, three bet Gomilla once already, they view Gomilla as a guy who you can pick on. Yeah, uh, well, he obviously, you know, they've obviously got a bit of history. He felt he was getting three bet light. He's decided to go for the, the light four bet, but... Um, and yeah, he obviously feels he's got um, a, a big edge, edge against him post flop. He, he would have taken it away against him on a lot of flops, but it didn't seem to work out for him that time. Dozen hands of this final table have been played, and the rankings very similar to the way we started. Mulbeck and Franklin still ahead. Lelouch has picked up a little ground. We'll be back with more from the Party Poker Global Qualifier event number one, final table. Had a big hand. Is this gonna be a walk? <laughs> nice hand. One time? Two times. Don't forget we are friends, huh? Oh! Very near to push. No point there anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to Premier League Poker 5. Six global qualifiers are battling it out for a place in the main event. Let's head back over to your commentators, Jesse May and Andrew Feldman. There's no reason for this final table to go quick with so much at stake. Wow. Players are gonna play this all the way to the end, my guess. It's a three raise, 12,000. It's a four, four. Wow, that's a pretty loose open from, from a mob back under the gun. Didn't, didn't really expect him to be coming in with, as we see, there are no real hands out there. So imagine Malbec's just gonna take the blinds down here. Franklin has come to play, and I, I, I like the idea. I mean, Molbeck should be super strong here. He's not with an under-the-gun raise, but quite clearly, Franklin is trying to target certain players here. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and this is a kind of flop which he's, you know, if you're calling a raise with 10A and you flop a gut shot, you're definitely not, go you know, definitely not going away. Now, if, if Mulbeck can just flat call here, he could end up winning a big pot. It just depends how aggressively he, he decides to play it. Well, there's a lot more reasons to flat call than raise, aren't there? I mean, you try and, and put Franklin on a hand, and it, 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 it feels like a draw or a six or something that's not super strong here more often than a, than a hand that can call a raise, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, wow, it just turns quads. Again, this guy just, just makes quads like that, but the thing is Franklin just probably knows it's just not a good card to try and make him fold anything. And uh, Mulbeck checks back if, if Franklin hits a 10 or an 8 then now Franklin might bluff this but no he does well just to give up um, and he obviously will not be getting any action with um, unfortunately for Mulbeck he won't be getting any action with his quads yeah Franklin did well to find the escape hatch he did but um, I, I think if the turn wasn't a 9 he may have ended up um, bluffing off a few more chips there so 
It's just uh, you know, a nine just he couldn't con con continue with his bluff. Well, every player has his day, and it right now seems like it is Peter Molbeck's. Well, yeah, I mean, at, in his heat, he was m flopping two pairs and sets for fun, and now it's gone up to four of a kind. I think we're just kind of waiting for him to make his uh, straight flush. <laughs> He's over the million mark in chips, Peter Molbeck. However, the three million mark, and just over, is where you need to be. 3.6 million in play, to be exact. I think Rizzo's um, gonna make an under the gun open race here with Queen Jack. Probably mi min race here. 4,000. Yeah, that's what I kind of expected. If uh, things continue how they are, Andrew, Rizzo's gonna be the first player at the table to start thinking about altering his play based on stack size. You know, he, he's obviously got 50 big blinds, but when the blinds hit five and 10, it'll, it'll be more like 30, so. Mm. He, he's got a few reasons to try and get things going, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got a lot of experience in these, and he, yeah, he, he's going to want to try and accumulate um, ac accumulate chips against the players where he has a where he feels he's got a, a, an edge against post flop. And now, why the three bet from the small blind here by Franklin rather than? Wow. Well, this could be interesting how, how this pat plot plays out. Um, play, some players flat call here with 10, some players decide to go for the three bet. I mean, generally, when players three bet here with the 10s, they're just kind of of um, going to go with it. And I think the reason why Rizzo's decided to make the four, four bet very light here is because he's seen how active Franklin's been. And because Franklin knows that, I think he's just going to at least call here. It's just whether he five bets. I personally think he's going to five bet here and he's just going to go with it. He doesn't look like he's really here to be, be folding. There we go. The all in and um, the snap fold by Rizzo. So a bit of a missed time in there for, for Rizzo, but I can understand why he's decided to go for the light four bet. A great player, Giovanni Rizzo, but his timing was a little off in the heat. And here again against Franklin. Wrong time to make the move. Yeah, he's a bit unfortunate there. Um, Franklin obviously had, you know, a, a big hand there. It, it did put him to the test, but, you know, full credit to Franklin. He, he's, he didn't get pushed off and he, he made a good shove. I think I've got a pretty good chance. There's a few online qualifiers who've got a lot of the chips and then um, a couple of pros who are short stacked who I've heard of but don't really know. So hopefully we can get through. We had the pleasure of watching Alexander K.P. Pedersen, the Dane during Heat B, who basically raised and re-raised every single pot. Right now, to me, Franklin seems to have adopted that mode a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think he's just, he's obviously been, he's obviously done his research on these players and and he's, he's just, he's, just uh, he's, he's got the chips, he's got, there's, there's uh, a, lot, a lot of play right now with the blinds being reset and He's just, um, yeah, he's just being like trying to be the uh, the table captain. Gomula's opened this up under the gun with the deuces, and he's going to meet some resistance here. I would imagine uh, Tredakoff is going to at least flat call here with Ace Ten, possibly three bet. I think he's going to just call. I mean. It seemed like from from so far that, that Gomilla is kind of the best player at the table to three bet in the sense that he's gonna play very honestly when he gets three bet. You know, he's folding a lot of times and when he and when he comes back over the top, you know he's got it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Gomilla isn't really yeah, Gomilla's playing very, very straightforward. Um I, yeah, that's exactly it. I, I would never expect Gomilla. Nope. I, I expect Gamilla here just uh, to muck the deuces and be mucking so many hands. So it turns out this ace-10-3 bet is gonna would get through a, a lot of the time. It's a pretty large size three bet as well. It is, I mean, yeah. For Tredakoff it is. He normally likes to go for the much smaller three bet. So, but I can't see Gamilla doing anything but folding the, the, two, the twos here. I mean, there is there's not any value in set mining Definitely here. Definitely not. There? Absolutely not. N not uh, oh. not when he's re-raised so much. Uh, 
Tretikov. Always seems to manage to get his share of the pots, does this Russian. Bring them on. Nice. First time in the opera. 17 yeah, hands played and yeah. the first time I've pretty much the okay. yeah, no think. change in the standings. I think if for one time it's okay. I, yeah, it's an experience. It's not, it's Rizzo right yeah. now will feel like no, things yeah. have not gone well. And this is his last chance to yeah, I think I've been get a pot time. one in 3-6 before the blinds go up. Yeah, he's coming for um, a fairly standard open in the cutoff with King-9. Uh, Lelouch with a pair of fives, I would imagine, is going to three bet here. Well, now he's asked for a count, and, and the reason is, is I'm guessing, if he does make a three bet here, uh, whether he's going to have to call the Whether he's going to have to yet. call, because the four bet will be a shove. I'd have personally preferred Lelouch to, um, to, to a three bet um, and just got it in against Rizzo's stat. It's just so horrible to play fives out of position against. Really, to get 200 in with two fives. Yeah, but I, I just, you know, you're just going to now having to be folding the best hand so often. You know, Riz is going to bet, and Alush will obviously fold here. But, but I mean, because but the chances are, if he three bets, Rizzo is going to fold anyway. And and if he does make the four bet, then you just have to kind of hope that he's got you know, ace king ace queen. So I would have personally preferred a three bet, but. I can, like you say, I, I can kind of understand that flat calling as well. They have played the first level. Lines are going to five and ten thousand. Rizzo and Gamil are at the bottom, but Molbeck is well in the lead with over a million chips. It's going to be a tough challenge, and let's not forget what they are all playing for: a seat in the main event alongside some of poker's best, including last year's runner-up Luke Schwartz. The Premier League Poker 5, if I, if I could win that, that'd be great. I've come second last year, and to win this would be a dream. It's bubble gum Schwartz, you're supposed to be chewing gum. It's always fun to wind people up and ruffle their feathers and stuff. Your little four is good, ooh, you would call any bet. <laughs> I'm talking about the last round. Round. You never know you like that. <laughs> In your eye, David you Benjamin, you arrogant guy. I think you can angle me, you just got so pwned, it's a joke. I really don't care if I come out and last, it's not a big deal to me. I, I win millions of dollars online, there's so, so much of mine. Like, I'm so calm, I don't even care about this. Oh, I hate poker so, so hard. Sick. Sick. I didn't mean to kick that. Oh, watch out. So dumb. Got JC out, and that is what I'm talking about. That's what you oh, want. Why'd you slow roll? Such you an easy call. Cool. I think I've got quite a lot of respect for my uh, colleagues. It is so much fun playing hands with Bubblegum because he just goes uh, like ballistic. If things go, and he makes good, and he plays well, he's like, you know, it's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to playing with him because I feel like he's gonna be one of these guys who's gonna look to attack me and my, my history against players like that is quite good. I guess like a, <laughs> quite a unique guy. Um, he's beaten me in some in some strange spots, I guess you could say. But he's he's a tough player. Uh, definitely, you know, playing at another level, and it'll be it'll be you know it'll be entertaining. I mean, I expect to make the final table and do well on the final table. That's for sure. Um, be a huge disappointment if if I miss the final table, but I highly doubt that's going to happen. With just two spots remaining in the main event, it's a chance of a lifetime for our global qualifiers to play alongside poker's greats. Tonight, one of these six players will win through to Premier League Poker 5. This final table action continues after the break. This year, Montesino is hosting the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5. There are two seats in the main event still up for grabs. The global qualifier Event 1 final table is playing out to determine who will win one of these spots. Let's rejoin your commentary team. Franklin has been the most active player, would you say, since we started this final table? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the only um, player that is, is causing him a threat is 
It's this uh, Warbeck, and he obviously feels as if he's going to, you know, he he feels as if, as if his post block game's a, a lot stronger than the other players is. So he's just going at these players and putting them to the test. When you talk about the winner take all sit and go format, there is sort of a, a traditional strategy which involves kind of you know playing a little bit tight early on and then ramping it up but it's different when there's staggered starting stacks which is what we've got here getting into the premier league main draw it's it's not just another tournament first of all there's a lot of money to be won there you know second of all this seat is worth a, a fortune 125,000 it's big money Third of all, the, the publicity uh, and the exposure you get on the big stage by playing with these guys. Moldeck takes one down. It's look these 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 opportunities don't come in poker too often anymore, do they? No, they, they certainly don't. Um, the poker uh, poker market's kind of taking a hit. I mean, especially you know, you can relate. I can you know, the, relate. The, yeah. the 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 money uh, prize money wasn't massive in the. Premier League mixed game championships recently yeah. in London, but the field, uh, and you, you took runner up obviously, the field that you that you came through to get to that stage was, uh, you, you know, was quite significant. And here's, uh, well now, now this is the first time that Franklin sort of had had a had a hand, I, I but it's it's not a three bet for exactly. value, is it? Because yeah, it, well, uh, I mean, Gamilla may have had enough. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I would have personally preferred him to flat call here. Um, I mean, I think he's going to get through. I don't know. I mean, Gamilla knows Franklin's been very aggressive. I, I can't, but I think Gamilla with over forty big blinds is just going to let the sevens go. It's a real decision time, isn't it? Because Franklin has now come over Gamilla. I think three out of the four times he's raised. And, of course, one of the times, Gamilla with the Kings made the re-re-raise. Yeah, but, but se yeah, the, se the, the sevens get through. I thought with the stack sizes and the positions where it got open from, he would, he would take that through. And uh, like you say, um, I think Franklin will be pretty happy he never, got, never had further pre-flop uh, pre uh, betting action against him. A four bet would have made Franklin's decision very tricky. Very tough, have. yeah. I would imagine it would have made him put, put, put him in a tough spot. Probably would have got through in that particular spot. Right now, Franklin just seems like he's going to keep doing this until somebody says different. Franklin's standard open there for for him with seven six of spades. Morbet just calls here with with the eights, and I, I imagine we're going to see at least one eight on the flop. It's funny, you know, because obviously calling a position with the eights, it, especially when you're deep, obviously it's it, it's a standard play. Yeah, perfect. I just feel like against Franklin, you, you know, he's opening so much. Can you really just call him? Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I mean, he's open under the gun there. He's, he is going to have a hand sometimes, so I think calling is, is definitely the, the, the right play there and just reevaluating on the flop. And if uh, Franklin makes, does bet here, it, I know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to. I think this is going to go check, check, check. No. Wow. That's wow. A, that's a big bet, too, isn't and it? That's a very strong bet. A lot of players would just check back here with the eights, but that's a strong bet, and, um, He's certainly. Uh, well, yeah. he's used his image there. He anyway. has, yeah. He's used his image and he sensed weakness. You know, and um, fair play. He's, uh, he had the best hand and he took the pot down. Molbeck of the opinion I've got the chip lead. As long as I've got it, you're going to have to come after me. And so they will. You kind of everyone's sort of waiting for, uh, at least we've been watching Andrew waiting for the time when Molbeck is going to run into a bit of trouble. It hasn't happened yet. Has well, it? you say that, but it looks like he, he's going to certainly be be running into a bit of trouble here with uh, <laughs> Rizzo picking up the two kings. But unfortunately for Rizzo, Molbeck just doesn't have the hand to call the three bet with. So. You, you were tempting the poker gods when you said that, Jesse, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, an opportunity to, to really go crazy here for Moldbeck, but he hasn't ex exhibited any any tendencies yeah, that I make us think he's going to just do that. Nah, definitely not. He's going to just give this up. I'd be very surprised if he calls here. And it would be a really strange place for Rizzo to make a light three bet very under the gun plus one. Yeah, or? no, but his stack size as well. I mean, Rizzo started to hands with 22 big lines. He's not going to be putting in 20% of his stack here to, um, to it against an under the gun open without a hand. But he is giving it a... Wow, he's called. Ah, that has really surprised me. I don't understand what, what, why he's... What well, he must be trying is. to put Rizzo on... Is putting him on ace king, putting him on two tens, possibly, yeah. Thinking that if a queen or jack flops, he'll be good, and he's actually gotten a bit fortunate to have missed this flop. He has, yeah, he has, because like you say, queen or jack high, and he's going to be doubling up Rizzo. Rizzo's going to probably put him on. Rizzo probably puts him on nines or tens, and that's why he's he's kind he's betting. All in a fold. Yeah, he was kind of trying to bet small to to induce a shove, but more back with the queen eye just lets it go. Well, for Rizzo, he was getting a little bit excited there. It wasn't his chance to double up. Almost. Almost. Still in sixth position, but a few more chips than he had before. Only one spot means that you got to make hands, you got to win flips, you got to play right, and the card's got to fall right. So. It's exciting, it's just exciting to be here. I'll do my best. Uh, just, uh, you know, full steam ahead. It's gonna be a great day for one. Five will be lying awake late tonight, staring at the ceiling, wincing in pain. One four. Pretty loose open there from Lelouch. Under the gun open, min raise with the king, suited king. This stuff all gets determined by who's in the blinds, doesn't it? Uh, I would imagine so, yes. Yeah, uh, obviously, Tredekoff in the in the, in the big blind, he probably sees him as uh, the, the soft spot. Um, and Lelouch has been relatively quiet, hasn't done anything too much out of line. So, wow. Well, now, that is a wrinkle from Molbeck, isn't it? That's a very strong three bet there. We, we've we seen him do a lot of calling in that spot. Yeah, we much, ha This much is the first... Folding or folding, I mean, really. So that's impressive, actually, isn't it? I mean, this is the kind of stuff... It is, yeah. ...that's going to really confuse players, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be successful. Well, I think I think it is, but if Lelouch... I would imagine Lelouch is just going to let, let this go. Yeah, just snap Six folds. Four. Didn't really... Think that, uh, well, I don't know if anybody's going to ever catch on to it because he was so honest the way he played Mulbeck in his opening heat that if he keeps this up and turns the notch up, he could have two million before anyone realizes what's happening. Possibly, yeah. I mean, he certainly baffled me with his um, with some of his, his plays. The only constant since this final table began is Peter Molbeck accumulating chips. One four. And this could be this could be the beginning of the Peter Molbeck story, Andrew. You know, I mean, we could be looking at this guy a couple weeks from now, Two Premier eight, League 21. poker champion, having defeated Patrick <laughs> Antonius, <laughs> Seidel, Kachalov, Luke Tom Schwartz. Dwan, Luke, Luke Schwartz. Schwartz, and uh, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of name calling involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Luke Schwartz will probably alternate the use of the word pigeon every other <laughs> hand with, with some other choice phrases, and uh, this this could be this could be where it all starts. Six Franklin comes in uh, with Jack Nine. That's pretty standard with his stack size and the loose. Uh, Black calls with King Queen. This is the first time these two have squared off. Yeah, and uh, Lelouch is gonna probably Six, win a few chips here. Um, Franklin's definitely see better in this flop. It's it's a very strong hand for Lelouch. I mean, obviously you're beat by Ace King, you're you're beat by Aces. That's about it. But is it strong enough to warrant a check raise? Never. Nah, he's definitely not. Uh, well, he's. I didn't expect him to, but with, with he's obviously. 
Yeah, he obviously was check racing to get it in. I, I personally thought he would have just flat called there, but he's, I mean, he obviously knows Franklin's capable of calling a check race. You know, he's, he, he knows how aggressive Franklin has been playing. So he was happy to, to go with his hand with 50 big blinds, but Franklin with the jack to Kai just gave it up. Alexander K.P. Patterson, yeah, that time though. He was right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there, it, that was multi-way, so he was a, a little bit more cautious. Um, heads okay. up on a king three four flop, you do feel pretty confident with king queen. I asked Anthony Lelouch about that hand against Alexander Pedersen, or he folded the king queen on the turn. He said, "Ah, I wanted to fold it on the flop." <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> he was being critical for himself for wasting those chips. <laughs> now, this is a spot, it, it feels very similar. Uh, obviously, we saw Lelouch t pretty much torture the Enigma blind on blind in the heat stages. Uh, my guess is, even though Gamala may be slightly more solid than the Enigma, Lelouch will view them the same way as playing genuinely, generally, much, honestly? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I would, I mean, I think he's, uh, he's probably going to give um, a bit more credit to, uh, as he's just gone for the, ch I thought he, he might have, um, he might have gone for a continuation bet there with the queen deuce, but uh, he's, I think now Lelouch will bet. What's the idea? He was going to try and check call, see what happens? I don't know. I think so, yeah. I think he, Maybe maybe check. He might have checked raise the flop. I don't know. I think Lelouch may bet like 30k. It's a tricky spot, but yet this pot is pretty interesting. I mean, in 52,000, you don't you don't want to just give up on it, do no, you? No, exactly not. And yeah, I'm wondering, Andrew, now that he's bet by betting this turn, is he kind of committing himself to to, to betting the river as well? If he gets called, uh, I think he's done with it unless he improves. Okay. Um, he's obviously he was obviously trying to make ace high king high all fold there and um, which which he did so you know that was a pretty um, impressive line he took there. He takes some funny lines and for some reason they all seem to be perfect. I can really play good poker and I can really suck sometimes. And there's another guy, I think he's not that good. He's got many chips. I won't tell you who is it, because if he wants, he's going to watch me, he's going to kill me. <laughs> so I'm going to try to extract the maximum of chips from him. Well, Lucia will have the button this hand. 20. Three raised to 20. And four, four. we've seen the tens go round and round. This time Moldex got him. Well, this would be one boring dinner party this table, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's you can, just ki you can <laughs> kind of feel the tension out of the table. Lelouch with the threes, I probably think he's going to call. With, uh, they're, they're both pretty deep. He's got over 60 big blinds in position. Calling's pretty, it's perfectly fine here. And Molbeck, you know, for other reasons than just what hand Lelouch has, you know, as the flop goes on, as it becomes turns and rivers, Lelouch gets more comfortable and Mulbeck gets less comfortable. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if Lelouch sm smell, smell we smells weakness, he may bet, but I think Lelouch is just hoping his threes are good. I think this is going to go che check again. Yeah, Lelouch is just hoping um, Mulbeck's got ace, queen, or ace, ten, which uh, has just improved. Yeah. Tens. Uh, I think Lelouch will be kicking himself he didn't bet. Be a friend, free check. Yes, But uh, Lelouch opted to play the more conservative route. Yeah. In, in his mind, perhaps, Molbeck could have been making that sort of play with a, a jack. Uh, no? I think he put him on... I mean, he opened under the gun. He, I, think he, I think he was putting him on ace, queen, ace, ten, and when the ace came, he was just think, expecting to get check called, so Lelouch just 
was just hoping that it would have got checked down to the river in his threes one but obviously when the ace came he he just gave up Perfect. Giovanni waiting on some cards that have not yet come Tridikov might open here no it falls a seven Lelouch is definitely not folding an Nine ace four. here min raise is in fashion right now yeah and don't forget we are friends. Oh, yeah. Let me check again. Morpik in the big blind with the oh, rag ace. You if, you are, if you are really friends. Mike cool. Oh, okay. uh, he just gives had a, big, had a big hand. <laughs> but you're friends. <laughs> Friendly <laughs> game. Makes sense. <laughs> are we friends? Oh, Is this going to be a war? <laughs> well, it's only friendly oh, no. until the field gets smaller. First prize at this final table, the value of a seat in the Premier League Poker draw. It's a $125,000 buy-in, Premier League Poker 5. However, with $200,000 added by the sponsor, Party Poker, the value of the seat immediately Incre goes up, yeah, goes up does. about $10,000, doesn't it? So. Yeah. It's uh, One race 20. and the, the seat at the uh, main event, the WPT, I believe. The winner gets Plus the there. seat. So, he, he, you know, it's 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 kind of hard to put a value other than this. And potential, it's huge. Uh, potential sponsorship as well. Plus a, a lifetime of fame. Yep. And you can't Immortality of your poker name. Think of the players who have won the Premier League before. I mean, impressive list. Yuha Helpy. Was Andy Black? Did he win? <laughs> Andy Black, and there was uh, David Benjamin and J.C. Tran. What's and, ever happened uh, to J.C. Tran? Uh, it's funny you should funny you should mention J.C. Tran. He's now the he owns a fleet of fishing boats. Uh, no, he doesn't. Although, although he is an avid fisherman, J.C. Tran. He's still around and still playing as many tournaments as he used to, but I think he's become a bit of a family man recently and just spending slightly more time around home. Unfortunately, couldn't make the trip over due to scheduling for this Premier League, but uh, what an impressive victory he had a few years ago. Wow, so Rizzo thinks he's bluffing. He actually has the best hand, and I think Gamilla's considering raising, but I just think he's gonna just he, 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 he gonna let this go. Yeah, yeah he's gonna give, give uh, Rizzo credit for the queen. Well, so. in some ways, it's kind of what feels like a desperation bluff, but sometimes those are the best kinds, right? Yeah, it, it does. I mean, he he's obviously decided to represent the queen, thinking he, he's gonna make, um, you know, make uh, Camilla fold a lot of hands there. So it did feel a little bit desperate, but got through so he'll be more than uh, delighted with that pot. Desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> but he's still well in it. And at the end of two levels, Andrew, uh, obviously Molbeck's increased. Lelouch has increased his stack as well since the start. Yeah, Lelouch has been playing very well again. He's he's, he's not been he's been winning every pot he's, he's been get, getting in so he'll be very happy with how things have gone and, and Franklin has been pretty much he slowed down a bit, but he's still opening a lot of hands, and I think he's just going to continue that aggression uh, um, for as long as he's above average uh, chip stack. We'll be back after the break for more action from this Global Qualifier Final. Welcome back. Andrew Feldman and myself thrilled and fascinated at this final table. Trenikov, to me, Andrew, was quite a lot, was a lot more active in his heat. His cards weren't all that much better. It, it, I don't know if he's feeling the pressure or has just made a decision to be just a bit more conservative early on, but he's barely moved a chip. And what's Rizzo up to under the gun? He's got, 
Yes. 21 big blinds. Oh, his timing. Oh, the yeah, poor guy's timing. Yeah, time, timing's bad. I think Lelouch is going to make it like 62 here. Just like do it. He may have been flat, but I think Lelouch will probably do us a very... You know, with their history, Andrew, there's so many reasons to re-raise here because, uh, you know, if there's one guy who's thinking, I'm not going to let this Lelouch push me around, it has to be Rizzo. Yeah, and, and you can just see he's just shaking his head. He's thinking, how can Lelouch just always have it against me? <laughs> always, always has it. And this <laughs> particular time he did. Um, so Lelouch has got a massive psychological edge against Rizzo, and that is going to be very uh, frustrating. But... Rizzo doesn't do anything too crazy, and I'll be quite happy when he sees that that particular time uh, Lelouch had it. <laughs> I feel bad for Lelouch taking that pop, but you feel bad for Rizzo. Like, that was his big move there, yeah. you know? I've got 21 big blinds. Yeah. I've got one more hand that I can raise, raise before fold. I have raise fold. fold yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just zoom. And walks into it's all over and now. And walks into Lelouch's aces, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you got to give the guy some credit. He's got heart, which oh, is which, a ton of heart. That's that you know that's <laughs> that's always good to to see. So give him give him full respect there. <laughs> yeah, listen, my heart's on my sleeve for Giovanni Rizzo. I I know how much this means to him. Yeah, but uh, he seems a really nice guy. Loose with a standard open, a seven. Well, as we see. Gomillo with the two kings on the button may well get some action here. Um, he's going to three bet, and I wouldn't put it past Lelouch to put in a fourth bet here, as we've seen him do it before with a lot worse hands. Right, because because he Gomilla is the kind of guy who you feel like uh, you can get to, to late. Oh, wow, Morbach has a hand here. Now, Morbach has a very tough spot here, very six, tricky six. spot. I. I I, w I would leave it to you, Jesse, what you think um, Morbeck can do because I, I He's interested. I, I look at him. Yeah. <laughs> it, look, I it looks I like a guess. cat. <laughs> I, could, I, 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 I don't know. He, but I'm I, really not sure what I mean, he's what does do. the decision come down to? It all comes down it comes, to... It comes down to how strong you feel Camilla is here because you're kind of ruling out Lelouch because he's coming just for a standard cut-off open, which he's been doing a lot of the time. So he rules out Lelouch having a hand. Um, it's just what he, th he thinks Camilla has. <laughs> Um, and if he thinks Gomilla is making a move here, then he's got to put in the fourth race. But the thing about Gomilla is um, you can't put a four... If, if you four bet here, you have to go for his whole stack, right? Because with, he's with, only got with, about 300k with, left. Yeah, with more, but that's what he's, he's thinking. Um, he's thinking if he puts in the fourth race here, um, does that mean he's going to have to call with Gomilla shoves? So as you can see, he's just... Cap be calling. I didn't. Call. I think that calling is probably the worst, really. That you're out. The worst out of three. Yeah, it's the because worst. You're what does it do? It, it reduces you to trying to hit a set, and if you don't hit a set, you're playing a guessing exactly. game. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah. You it, know what? What's Molbeck going to do on a, a ten high flop? Only he can tell you. I mean, this particular flop, I imagine three. he's going to check fold. Gamilla's uh, <laughs> bet so small. Gamilla's he's bet a feather. Yeah, Gamilla's just trying to like suck him in. It's not even a bet. That's yeah. a buh. That's yeah. just one B. He's just trying to induce <laughs> induce him to raise. Uh, I think Gamilla knows exactly where he is in his hand. He's putting more back probably on tens. Right. And he's trying to um, extract as much value as he can. It, you were mentioning that you, you didn't weren't crazy about the call, but no, probably wasn't. the biggest mistake Molbeck has made is. It was so obvious that his hand exactly, was hand medium is. strength. Well, that yeah, it, I mean, you, then again, you may play aces like this. I don't know, some players may play aces. Well, right, like well, this. just because of the way he dwelt up and everything. Like yeah, that, when that. he dwelt up, it looked like he had, to, I mean, it li looks like he's got tens. Like tens, you might play like this, but nines, nines below, you're just going to fold. But it, it, you would expect to fold, but, and that's a good fold on the flop, at least. At least he didn't do too many more chips. And that could have been the first crack in Molbeck's armor, but for Gomilla, the first pot of significance that he's won at this final table. And listen, steady as they go, right? There's no problem with playing steady. No, uh, so it might not be the flashiest thing in the world, but give him some cards and it'll work. Yeah, yeah as you see, he's had the, the Cowboys twice and he's, he's won um, two relatively nice pots.
it's when it takes all then uh, the aggressive uh, on a table will be very very hard um, no bubble because only one place is the cash game and I try to get all the chip for sure it's, it's one thing we learned about you know the Spaniard Gamilla same with Giovanni Rizzo they're not gonna knock themselves out of this tournament you know I yeah. mean no, it's certainly not. You, you can't write anyone off at this at this um, final table yet. Everyone's got above 20 big blinds, so there's still a lot of play left uh, in this heat. Uh, he's it's like he had a feeling there, Tretikov. Like, you know, I've folded long enough or something. Sid one raise thirty thousand. Gamera in the high check with king turns, perfectly standard open, and Franklin finally wakes up with a big hand on the button he's gonna make this 75,000 I imagine well to, to get I, mean, it I mean talk me through this because you know gomilla has got about ooh, about 30 big blinds yeah um, so you make a decision now if you're Franklin about that you're gonna be willing to get it in given how much he's been three betting and, and how and and he knows that his his uh, image is is pretty crazy he is never folding ace queen in this spot for against a 30 35 big blind stack. Gamillion is going to think that Franklin could be light here and may decide to put in the fourth raise, but I think he's going to favor the fold and and he's made a, a fairly di disciplined fold there. Because it it did feel like a celebratory raise, didn't it? Yeah. And it, it, you did kind of feel if you hadn't seen any of the cards that Franklin. For what we've seen so far was just raising any two. Exactly, and and I'm telling you, if, if Lelouch had that, the king ten in that spot, Lelouch's chips would be all <laughs> through the line. You're so right. So and, You're and, so and, and right. We, we saw him do that before. Yeah. Lelouch did it before with the king ten, <laughs> but Gamilla is playing a slightly more conservative line. He's not doing anything too crazy out of line, um, and you know seems to just be waiting for his his big big pairs. What are the situations? Obviously, getting a cooler against someone is one situation. But if you're Lelouch and you realize you're going to have to slow this Franklin down, he's he's very dangerous, very aggressive. Um, is it going to be pre-flop? Is it going to be post-flop? Well, in position? I, I thought that it's going it's going to be pre-flop. Really, it's going to be you know a lot of this is going to be about pre-flop. There's not going to be too much raise calling seeing flops. It's going to be about who the the most aggressive player is pre-flop. So. Yeah, I think there's going to be, um, I would imagine, Franklin and Lelouch to get in to a few uh, free flop raising wars. And, and, and obviously Lelouch will be having his eye, trying to isolate the times when he's sure that Franklin is light, that kind of thing. This is an extremely loose call by Gomilla, out of position with King-9. Uh, and, and he's just now having... Just to play guessing games, do you have ace king? Do you have or do you have an overpair? What what is the right play here to do with with king nine? I mean, you know, because Molbeck has played kind of on the honest side, wouldn't you think his his plan is to hope it goes check check here, of thinking course, that Molbeck yeah. does isn't going to fire a second bullet? Well, no, I mean, he's obviously not. He's obviously loving on hitting the nuts. Yeah, he's absolutely loves that card, and Molbeck might double barrel here try to represent the king it looks like a card you should represent here doesn't it wow and this and is the first time molbeck yeah. has gone dry with yeah. the second bullet and his um, it, it but, just mean, happens to be unlucky yeah and Mo, uh, and i would imagine gamilla is going to make it like 130 here i don't think gamilla is going to flat cool he's going to put, put in a raise uh, i can't see gamilla doing anything but raising now there's so few likely hands that beat him, and there's a lot of hands that Molbeck's betting for value that he beats. Exactly, yeah. I mean, he could have a flush draw, he could have ace king, he could have aces. You want to get value out of, of all those hands. Um, yeah, and Gamilla isn't the kind, really kind of player here that's going to just, um, th that, that would just flat call on, on the turn. So he's gone for the raise, and Molbeck with the ace side is going to fold. <laughs> Molbeck not looking as tall and powerful as he did before. In fact, I think this is the first time he's dipped down below his starting stack, while as Gomilla shooting right up there. Everybody knows they need a little bit of cooperation from the deck to get through. To three. 
Move it with the uh, ace queen under the gun. It's fairly standard open. Listen, Andrew, the, the players obviously didn't see Molbeck's hand where he passed on the turn and had, had been bluffing, but they'll be aware that because he passed so quickly after betting, uh, they'll be aware that perhaps he's not as honest as he had purported to yeah, be. Yeah, possibly, but I mean, may, yeah, pos yeah, quite possibly. That Can may, um, may, yeah, you're right. That was one of the first bets that he's that he's made the entire tournament that haven't been for value. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately walked into um, top two pair. Uh, oh, so Franklin with uh, the. Um, Thirty-five thousand. Yeah, uh, that's a, a nice strong bet there, but my ball ma makes Franklin fold. Pair of eights, pretty standard hand there. Well, Mulbeck loses one, gets one back. Mulbeck still on top, but this, I believe, the first time since the final table started that he's dipped under his starting stack and Gamilla up into fourth. We'll be back with more from the Party Poker Global Qualifier event number one, final table. This is Premier League Poker 5 from Montesino at the Gasometer Complex in Vienna. The Global Qualifier Event 1 Final is underway and only the winner will go through to the main event. Apart from Rizzo who's got what, 20 big blinds, uh, everyone is, is you, know, you know, everyone's really got a shot here. Um, so, yeah, the final table is, is balancing out really well right now. The Russian's been very, very quiet of late. I wonder if, oh, so we, we actually see him now have a, a hand which he's definitely coming for a raise. Definitely he'll be uh, opening here with, this, with the sixes. To five raise, 30,000. And the players will be aware of it. He hasn't yeah. done much. And if, as we can see, Lelouch is already giving it some thought with, uh, with the four high here. Wow. And it looks like he is going to put in the three bet. I, I guess there's this funny thing, you know, a lot of guys say to themselves, I haven't raised a hand in a while. I've been really tight. So I, they have to give me a lot of respect. But it's funny. Sometimes the guys who are the tightest are the ones who get the least respect. People love to three bet the tight guys, don't they? Yeah, of course. And uh, Lelouch has seen him as, as the, uh, the soft spot. And we can see he's targeted him by raising all his big blinds. And it's now put Tredekoff in a very... Uh, tricky spot. I think Tredekoff I think it's unwarranted. I think it's down to the red sweater, personally. <laughs> yeah, well, that could possibly have some kind of factor. I think uh, here Tredekoff is, is going to flat call uh, and just check fold like 80% of flops. How silly would the four bet be? I mean, well, we no, can see the not, cards, but not, not in his uh, doesn't make repertoire. sense either. Not, not, it, I mean, it does make sense, but it's not in, in his repertoire to do this. I he like. also has he has too many chips to yeah. four bet shove, doesn't he? Yeah, we, we see he's just just made the call. Yeah, exactly. He's got. He, I mean, he does have a very tough uh, tough stack size to to That's put to put in that fourth bet. But I see Lelouch winning this pot so many times post flop. But but now Lelouch has made a pair. He might check back. I think. But I would imagine Lelouch is is going to bet. Uh, 75,000 and Tredekoff will just uh, fold. That's how I see this this pot going. Wow. That's 70,000. Well, you know, this is where Lelouch really is going to have to draw a line in the sand because uh, Lelouch absolutely it is what it looks it. like. It's not a strong bet. It's a testing bet. Yeah, and Lelouch hates this, though. You just don't expect players to, like, to lead into you here without at least top pair. I don't know what Tredekoff is uh, thinking, to be honest. I don't know what's going through his head. I just think about Annette Overstadt, you know. She's, she says, look, I don't care who they are, I don't care what they have, and I don't care what's on the flop. <laughs> if they lead into me, I'm raising. <laughs> so Lelouch is trying to get a read on him on his, and Lelouch, he's, he's on to him, he's on to him already. You can see this, and, and I, I think Lelouch might now, he may make it like 180 if he's gonna. Yeah, he's preferred to come for. He's gone for the raise, yeah. And, and he's gonna get through. Well, it, it, but it, it's so interesting, isn't it? I mean, y you know, Lelouch is obviously treating his pair of threes like they're nothing because if he gets shoved on, he has to pass, yeah. right? 
Yeah, he's yeah, well exactly, and he knows if he, if he gets called, he's still got he's still going to have probably five outs. It puts a lot of pressure on. It puts a lot of pressure on King Queen, King Jack, unless Tredikov has Ace King plus. It's a very very tough spot, and you got to give Lelouch maximum credit here to play his hand the way he's done. You just cannot be trying to outplay Lelouch in any pots. Well, it's such a it's such a complex hand, isn't it? In in some ways, because would Lelouch actually be raising him here with a king? Definitely, yeah, definitely, he okay. would. King queen, yeah, king you, you queen. Would, ace you king. would be raising to get yeah, it in, of course. Okay. Have to raise. They're the with the flush draw out. Yeah, he's obviously folding. I'm surprised he gave it so much thought. Lelouch is going to think he's made him fold a king, and he'll be absolutely delighted when he finds out he only had two sixes. He's probably going to be thinking. <laughs> What what you know what why why take so long? But that's a very nice putt and Lelouch now that puts him almost a um, chip leader. So he is still my tip to uh, to go through. All hail, Sir Lelouch. Sir Lelouch indeed. I, I think Lelouch is going to be stunned when he sees uh, what. What uh, Tredikov was tanking with there, absolutely, he'll be he'll be very shocked. It's, it's interesting. You you wonder about the timing of thing, and, and I, I, there's there's so much of a, the stack size stuff comes into play, where you know the, the those stack sizes between thirty and forty they get very awkward for people don't exactly, they? exactly yeah and that's what Lelouch when really have a medium strength hand that, that's what yeah and Lelouch um, has has taken advantage of that and has made a, a hand where he was a, a twenty percent favorite to win on the flop to to fold now if Gomilla pulls a trigger here this will be interesting this will be interesting how right. this this hand develops. If he does make the three bet, what Lelouch does with the two sevens? Because now it's going to be Lelouch who's the the, the one out of position with the mid there. So how does Lelouch play this? Also, really the first time Gomilla's gotten out of line severely with three betting. Well, he did it before with the Sudan 910 That's against true. against the um, against the Russian. Um, I don't think Lelouch is folding for a min three bet. It's just how aggressively he's going to play this. He's is is Gomilla capable of shoving if if Lelouch makes a, a four bet? No, wow, he's no, just, no, he's no, just he's called. He decided to peel off a flop. Gomilla was never. Gomilla was was uh, definitely folding if if Lelouch. But Lelouch had a very awkward awkward spot. Um, and now he has to do the very very difficult thing of having to play post flop yeah. Yeah. out of position yeah. against overcards. And that's the worst flop for two sevens really. Um, and I'm gonna imagine Gamilla's gonna bet. Like, it's the greatest flop in the world for the Queen Ten. It's not, but you can easily represent the Ace here. Represent Ace King, Ace Queen, uh, Pocket Jacks. You can represent a lot on this board. Um, and and two sevens has to pretty much fold here, unless Lelouch can sniff out what's going on, because it's a very very small bet. Lelouch is getting four to one on his money, uh, but just the fact that it, uh, just I think Lelouch is gonna let this go. If he can call that, this would be world well, class. Is, is, is if anyone can do it, if anyone can do it, it's Lelouch on this table. But it's a very, very tough spot for I him. I mean, would you prefer, you know, something like a, a small check raise no. rather than a call because you can get the guy to fold the queens, the tens, the wow. nines, the eights. He's he's, I mean, a, he's in a different level. Of, if he's he's definitely wanting to raise. It, look, he's it, he's done it. He's done it. <laughs> that was a sneaky little race. Yeah, he's he's well, well class. This Lelouch. I mean, he's cool. Oh, wow, wow, this pot could get very <laughs> interesting. Well, Lelouch kind of has to be done with it, doesn't well, exactly, he? Exactly, because Gamilla kind of knows his hand is so polarized to basically ace jack or nothing. <laughs> he, he, he would never be putting. Look how big this pot is. So uh, this is huge. Now, but well, now we're gonna get to see. Lelouch is done with his hand. He, he's done. He's done. He's not, he's, if, there's, if, everything is in this. Yeah. He's, he's only. Uh, wow, well, look at this turn. This is the biggest turn card you can imagine for Queen. He's gone. 47%. He's got a double gut shot with a flush draw. 
and the two over card. I mean, if you couldn't have asked for a better card, it's that the eight of eight or nine of clubs, and it comes. It's one, but fifty thousand. Oh, this is this is the. I mean, Lelouch just has to. Fu I mean, why is he bet fifty thousand? Because he's trying to look like he's got aces. He's trying to look so strong. Yeah, Lelouch is done. It's Lelouch nice. will be pretty sick when he. That's. I mean, you got to give Lelouch credit for. Yeah, well, Lelouch kind of sniffed it as well. He's thinking, he kind of sniffed, sniffed out. He might have been getting bluffed off there, but that was a very, very interesting hand. That's put um, Camilla almost. Uh, clearly the most significant hand of this final table for the Spaniard, Gomilla, who has pulled himself up into third, knocked Lelouch back into fourth. And what do you think? Is Gomilla the man? That's a very, I mean, it, it would have been very interesting how that would have played out if the turn wasn't the eight of clubs. I mean, the turn just was a be most beautiful card for his hand. Obviously, the king was the gem, but to improve his hand was a kick, eight or nine of clubs. Has so, Lelouch, are, are, are we just, have we been deceived by him because everything's worked? Is, the, is the, the answer to the story, if you play with fire enough times, you're going to get burnt? Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, it was a high variance play that he made. Uh, it turned out that he actually did have the best hand, so but um, just didn't work out for him that time. Well, Franklin getting involved, and he's got a huge hand. To be fair, because he's been a little bit quiet lately, it was folded around to him, Tretikoff's in the big blind, you'd almost expect him to be raising about 50, 60% exactly, of his yeah. hands right and, now. And uh, Franklin's been very quiet. He obviously has ace-king. Tretikoff has... Oh, okay, this could be the end of Tretikoff. Given how aggressively he's, uh, he's been playing ace-10 before, I'd expect Tretikoff to three-bet here, especially the fact it's suited, and he's just going to... Ah, oh, he's called. He's done. That's he's very done very well to call yeah, there he because it, very if he starts getting it in, he can hardly fold. That's yeah, tough. I mean it's not like he he's, he's tends to play ace ten a lot more aggressively than just flat it's calling to a he, single he, raise. He, he may have just. Uh, they both fl they both flop Broadway draws here. I think this is gonna go check, Franklin bets. Five check. Um and, Tretikoff may bet twenty seven may call. But yeah, I think Tredekop, uh, I don't know, he's got, he's got a decision. You know, he's only got about 320 back. Can he afford to call? He can, uh, yeah, he can afford to call. He's, he's, his ace might be good. He's got backdoor flush draw. King King gives him the nuts. Yeah, he can definitely afford to peel one. Some players may actually favor him just to raise, um, but his stat size is kind of makes it very tricky for him to do that. He's still got... What two hundred and ninety-four thousand? So that's a huge card for his hand now. Uh, but I think this is going to go check, check. Gives him the up and down straight draw, flush draw. Um, and imagine this is this will be check, and Franklin will just, will just just check back and go for the free card. But should Franklin bet, Tretikoff really should check, check raise all in. Yes, he? he should. But Franklin. Wow, what a blank. Yeah, total prick. But if Tredekov can fi find some courage to make a bet, Franklin will snap fold his hand because the only one hand in the deck that Franklin can beat with ace-king is ace-ten. There's no other hand he can beat. He has the one hand that ace-king <laughs> can beat. That's kind of funny. Uh, and it looks like he is going to make Franklin fold. So I do give him credit for... for 45,000. For betting here, it's a nice size bet. Isn't yeah, it? lovely bet. That was a very, very good bet. That's well, something's gone right for Tretikov. Yeah, yeah. He thought when that three of diamonds came, initially he thought, "Ooch." As it turns out, it's ooh. Time to take a short break from this match as Kara Scott speaks with Scott Siever. Scott Seaver is uh, is a really good player. He he had a huge 2011 winning the World Poker Tour Championship. He's a very formidable opponent. Scott and I are just checking out the uh, local area around the casino, and we find ourselves here in an empty restaurant before the crowds get in. <laughs> this is your first time to Vienna, but you've already seen some of it, right? 
Yes, I just got in this morning for my first time, but just spent a few hours walking around, taking in the sights. We, me and some friends, we got a tour guide, and it was a lot of fun. I'm very impressed by this, because you literally have not checked into your hotel yet, right? Right. Uh, my flight landed at 1010. I got to the hotel at 1045, and we were gone by 11. <laughs> it's important to get to see the sights while you can, and it's such a beautiful city that I really wanted to get out and see it. And you're here for the Premier League main event. What is so premier about this event? The Premier League just has the best poker players from all around the world converge on one spot to play a very elite tournament. And it's, first of all, an honor just to get invited to be part of it. But it's also really exciting for me to get a chance to try and prove myself to see if I can hang with the best in the world and hopefully maybe even beat them. And it's a really particular structure. The point system is really important. And a lot of the pros in the main event haven't really looked at this. What do you think of that? I feel that the entire tournament is based on the point system. And if you go in thinking of it as just any other regular poker game, you're not going to be playing it correctly. So hopefully maybe the fact that I do know how that works will come to my advantage. It should be very exciting to watch. We're looking forward to seeing you play. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to playing it. When you look at the, the, the stacks, there hasn't been that much movement. The guy who's now had the biggest uptick since the final table started, now Gamala. And he's looking like a very confident young Spaniard right now. Although that is a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? <laughs> Spaniards don't come without boatloads. Franklin opens under the gun with Queen Jack, which is perfectly standard. Wow, so uh, Dimitri wakes up with this uh, suited ace king on the button. Uh, his first real big hand on the final table. I imagine he's gonna three bet here to 70,000. Right, and three bet it to get it in, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Like of all players, you would dream to get it in here against Franklin. Yeah, he's just counting, thinking about how much he's going to three bet. Too much to shove, really. 400k right now, right? Uh, or is yeah, it... he's not shoving. I mean, he he just likes to, you know, he'll make a small three bet here. He'll make it like 70k. It's like, it's like he's going for 67. Is it... Making sure he's got all the colors of the rainbow. It seems like. Ways. Wow, Lelouch with the tens. Wow. Really, uh, really tr uh, tough spot for Lelouch. Here. Now, uh, is is call again the worst option? Is Lelouch this... is never calling. Lelouch okay. is much, much better to know. Calling is the worst of the three options. It's now Lelouch to put um, to make a decision. How strong is Tredekov? This is tough for, for a pair of tens. Uh, and Lelouch is just is now just going is is going for it. Um, and, and, and oh my gosh! Wow! <laughs> well, Camilla. Camilla wakes up with two jacks. But, but it's, jacks you're not really waking up right now. Yeah. Are I mean, you? Even, even queens here. You, cold five even there. queens you don't like. But jacks is an is is a definite fold. What do you think about Lelouch's uh, four bet size? I just wonder. Um, you know, he's raised to 144. Ah, so that's fine. Perfectly fine. That's it, perfect he's got turn. 400 back. Is he going to call his shot? No. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's calling. What, what, uh, yeah, he's calling. Yeah. They, he'll, he'll call when... Uh, what, Tredekov started with how much? Yeah, Tredekov started with 400k. So, Tredekov's going to shove for another 250. He'll be getting... You know, he won't like it, but he has to call and just hope he's got ace-king. Um, I imagine Tredekov is getting it in. But... Who knows? Tredekov may even flat call here. What a hand. Yeah, he called instantly. He made up his mind before. He's going for it now, Lelouch. Yeah, he's called, yeah, obviously, yeah. And it's a uh, uh, classic coin race, so it's an absolutely massive, massive uh, flip. <laughs> Gamala now sees that his jacks would have been ahead, but this pot, like you say, this is the flip. Yeah. This is the first big, big flip of this global qualification final. 
and his Tretikoff Beautiful. all in. Lelouch has only got a farthing back. Look at the jacket. Jack, the case jail. jack hits the board. The case jack. Wow. Gobola wants to crawl in a hole. If Lelouch wins this, he's he's going to be in the strongest position. He, he'll, be, he'll reach a, a million as well. Well, there's only six outs in the deck. Only There's only six, six outs in the deck. Lelouch has got his hands around that prize. Can he fade the ace or king? Yep, he does. The Russian in the red sweater, Dmitry Tretikov. I think he has accommodated himself well here in this uh, Premier League in the qualification stages. Andrew did well to get through. That flip would have been huge for him. Yeah, yeah, he, he would have been. He, he, he did slightly struggle um, at the, the final table. Lelouch was picking on his, his blinds a lot, and it, it turns out Lelouch ends up getting all his chips. This global qualifier final continues after the break. Welcome back to the final table of this global qualifier event one. We've just lost the Russian, Dmitry Tretyakov, leaving five for the prize here on this final table. It's, it's, it's just details, but when you think about what could have been, had Franklin just folded his queen jack under the gun, it could have worked out Tretikoff yeah. on the button. Yeah, Tretikoff opens, he three bets. Uh, yeah, he three bets, um, Gamilla four bets. Ace King shoves and then um, yeah, and Lelouch folds to tens. But you know, that's I poker. Mean, yeah, that is poker. Right. You know, if you leave a cheese too long in an open room, it smells. It, <laughs> it's it's two of one, half a dozen. Ah, of this the other. is interesting. What does uh, what does Lelouch do here with the suited King Jack against against Rizzo? So he, yeah, he just um, flat calls against um, uh, Rizzo, who's open with 20 big blinds. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it, don't you think it's a bit unorthodox to just flat a guy? Not against a 20 big blind stack. I think flatting is, is probably the best option. And he, uh, he's top, top pair. As it's a flush dial, it all goes in. It's all going in now. So Rizzo could be the next one out. Rizzo bets. Rizzo has to put this in and yeah, be happy uh, about definitely. it. Well, not not happy, but you're know, just never bet folding a flush draw with, with his stack size. Um, I would imagine um, Lelouch is going to make it 84 here just to induce just to induce a shove with a worse hand and Rizzo is, will definitely be shoving his flush draw. He'll get it in very quick here. Would there be any reason for Lelouch to call as the King's He's definitely no. not calling. Right. Definitely not. It's, it, I mean, there is reason, but because them two have so much history, he's trying to induce him to, to basically shove you know, basically get it in with a worse hand. And there are plenty of worse hands that Rizzo will will have go. to get it in. All with. in. Four, four this in. is a very standard Six hand. Call. And and a call and and does he hit his heart? That's the question. Well, Rizzo will think, look, this guy One time. Yeah, exactly. One That's time. exactly what he'll think. He's thinking this guy, this Frenchman, this Lelouch. How can you always have it? He has been the bane of my existence yeah. all the time. Just Give me this one, and then we'll play level from here on out. It's a pretty big pot as well. 600, it's pretty big. 620k and instant That's it. service. That is it. And he's got the straight flush draw just uh, to rub salt in the wound as well. Well, Giovanni Rizzo right now will feel like it's all been worth it. You know, look, I at the stack, look at yeah. the stack sizes. Sure. Everyone's even. Well, it's how exciting is that? It's, yeah, it's anyone's game. <laughs> I mean, how anyone's exciting is now. that? Five players for a Premier League seat, and you can't fit a nickel between them. Lelouch must feel like a ping pong ball right now. He's had his. How often has he had his chips in the center? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that was uh, if Lelouch wins that, he's on 1.3 million. Um, of course loses it and now he's around average stat but my money's still on a loose to, to take this seat he'll recompose himself but just looking at the the v chips there we just saw the last leaderboard we know why rizzo has, has got a very low v chip it's because his his stack dictated he played tight but the second lowest v chip at this table right now is molbeck who has had chips the whole way through and you fear like we saw in the heat that as the blinds go up if he's not willing to, to, to raise with, with weak hands and inferior hands, that he's going to get eaten up. Yeah, I agree with that. But he has shown some gears that neither of us expected. You know, three betting the king 10 before. Uh, and before he's, 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 he's he opened with a 7-3 of heart. So, no, I think Morbeck has adjusted pretty well. Uh, but of all the, the five players here, he's the one probably with the, the, 
the least amount of experience in this given format. So, it's a free call. yeah, like this calling here with 9-8 out of position is against an under the gun open just isn't optimal here. It's just not optimal at all. What do you do with the nine now? I mean, I expect Rizzo to bet here, and you have to fold the best hand. Classic position, pos positional uh, poker. You do you do you peel one off and just pray things go well? No, not no. I just fold. I fold a nine eight here. Nine ten I call, but not nine eight. Not to not against. Not in this spot. Yeah. So he ends up getting f uh, bluffed off the best hand. So that just shows you why, you know, it's just a pretty uh, big leap there not to be making loose defense against strong players. We are seeing a newly improved Giovanni Riso. It's the post-flush Italian. I'll tell you, I mean, the chip leader right now has just over 800K. The short stack has just under 700K. This is, this is knockdown, this is drag out, this is going to be intense. <laughs> you could just see these guys, they're going to be playing a flip sooner or later, some of them, that are, that's going to have an equity of, of like 100 grand. Yeah, it's pretty insane actually well, when you think of it like that. Yeah, you better tighten your belt at that stage. This is interesting, uh, more back on the button with the pocket eights, uh, Lelouch with the ace eight in the big blind to the min raise. Is, just is, selects the call. Well, is the idea that that all the stacks are so similar right now? Yeah, and he doesn't want to get in a pre-flop raise and all out of position, and you kind of under-rep your hand when you just flat call here uh, with an ace. Um, surprised Morbeck hasn't a uh, continuation bet there. It's a little bit surprising. I imagine uh, Lelouch will check, and Morbeck's going to bet like 35,000. Bet 40, and Lucia is just going to let the this the ace side go. Although he is giving it a bit of thought, he's thinking, "Is my ace good here? Would you know what pair do you have? Um, you've opened on the button, and you're just trying to steal it." So Lelouch may may find a call in in him with ace side, but it never feels too nice. Players these days are they're more likely to to bet their complete air on the flop than when they check back. Not necessarily. They have, no? Not necessarily. No. And he's decided to check raise. Wow. raise. That's very, very strong. 120. Oh, very strong play. Uh, and it puts eights in a very tough spot now. He's like, what the heck do you have? Well, he, he can he's, now only oh beat a bluff, right? But what, but it could be a draw, couldn't it? I mean... Well, he just, well, yeah, he's made a good call because he's just blown away. I mean, he's expecting him. If he's got a hand, he's going to bet it. Why would, you, why would you check? And I think Lelouch is done with this unless he hits uh, an ace. Can, can Lelouch win with a bet here? Is, does he know? Can is Mulbeck prepared? Do you think to call with eights, a two hundred thousand bet? Is he prepared? Um, only he can tell you that. I I, I think he is. To be honest, I, I think don't know. He is. It's a weird one. It's really weird. I mean, he, Mulbeck's made a very good call on the turn there. Um, you know, I think Lelouch is just trying to represent like four six seven five. You know, two pair king, uh, jack seven type hands. Is, uh, is the king a blank? It's a yeah. The king doesn't change anything. I mean, Lelouch never has king jack here. Oh, he's gone big. Six bets, four hundred forty. Wow. Oh, that's the hammer. Wow. That's it. That's yeah. That, 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 <laughs> oh that, my gosh. That gets through. That gets through for sure. Oh my gosh. What is this? Yeah, he's he's on a different level, Lelouch. Different level, but. He sensed that Mulbeck, he sensed that Mulbeck was prepared to call. Exactly, he? he did, and it. But he's. He, but I can't see Mulbeck calling this amount. Like, I would be, I would fall off my seat if Mulbeck calls here. But <laughs> I mean, he is giving it credit. I mean, he made a very good call on the turn. But you now players just don't like to hero call off all their chips. So he's bet 440. Yet. Don't forget we're friends. Huh? <laughs> he's overbet the overbet the pot on the river. I'm not sure if Lelouch, well, only he knows. He's very experienced, opening his mouth there. It feels scary to me, but only he this knows. Only he knows. He's actually left himself about 100,000 back. That's like the bus fare for Lelouch, in case this all goes pear-shaped. Mulbeck isn't calling. I'm surprised. 
I mean, look, yeah, he's curious. We, you know, a lot of players get curious, but I'm to fine. actually put their Sorry. chips in the line when they just have a bluff catcher. I mean, I mean, talk me through this. I mean, talk me through what Lelouch's range is right now. You're, you're two, ball back right now. Two pair plus, seven five plus. Um, he can, you know, possibly four six suited. You know, there's a straight out there. Um, to, to, there were two. Oh, yeah, I call. He called. He's called. He's called. He's called. He wow. Has called. That him. is absolutely oh. insane. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Maybe this guy deserves a seat because that is incredible. That's a world class call. He decided, didn't he? That's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, he knew! Uh, 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 he I'm knew! Stunned. I'm absolutely yeah, stunned. Same thing. That's a phenomenal yeah, yeah, call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy yeah, deserves to win a seat for it's, calling there. I mean, phenomenal. I, I, don't, I can't believe yeah, that. I'm, I'm shocked. Malouche can't believe it. Yeah. You don't wow. come to my hometown, says wow. Molbeck, and try and bluff me in my home yeah. casino. Yeah. Oh my Thank God. Uh, Later. Okay. Wow. I'm, I'm absolutely stunned. Yeah. Think so, of the stakes. It's yeah. $125,000 seat at Offer Stakes. That's absolutely insane. I, I feel for, oh, I feel for Lelouch. He's oh, played, Lelouch. He's played phenomenal, and that was a yeah. world class oh, bluff. That, that, that bluff should. He can't believe <laughs> it. Believe it. That, no, that bluff should get through. He should yeah. make two queens, <laughs> possibly two queens fold there. A jack should fold. You know, and, he's, and the guy's hero called him with eights. Phenomenal play by Lelouch, even, you know, better call by Morbo. That's Scary. Po poker to the highest level. So that's the hand which is going to go down in history. And you decide, what was it? It had to be the bet the size. Maybe, maybe it was. I, mean, I, don't, right? I don't know. Was it just a feeling? I don't know, really. I mean, possibly the bet size. He, he felt his hand was very polarized to the, to the nuts or nothing, maybe, he thought. And he probably thought, if you've got the hand you're trying to represent, you're probably going to bet yourself. He's right. There's one play. We should have one. Camilla limps in with the pseudo jack eight, and I imagine Franklin's going to raise in position with the jack nine. Um, Gamilla probably is going to appeal here. Wow, it's amazing. I mean, nobody, there is another hand going on, but still sitting in your seat, stunned about the power of Molbeck versus Lelouch. But so this is a three bet, or was it a limp? Uh, Gamilla's limped in the small blind, and Franklin has yeah, now. Gam Gamilla's gone from the limp raise here. Yeah, Gamilla's. Uh, you think he's going for a limp re raise? Yeah, he is. I think he is. He's seen how yeah he's seen how aggressive uh, Franklin is, and that's a smart play, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, it's smart, but it, it feels fishy though. I mean, but uh, it's it, is it getting through? I mean, possibly Franklin may peel in pos position here. You know, he's getting four to one on his money. The limp race just feels fishy. You know, laddering up has has so little value here. You look over at Molbeck, he's got 1.4 million. Do, do you, are you taking more chances now? Is that what the players are Yeah, and, and I mean, he's got position in it, and he's getting a good price, and he feels that he's, he may be able to outplay him, you know, in, in uh, on a lot, a lot of boards. So they've both missed, but this is... Uh, why is Gamilla checked? I don't get understand that at all. I mean, this is, you've limp raised, you're representing aces or kings, and you want to check a, a queen 7 2 board. Uh, and now Franklin picks up the flush draw. Which is like a lifeline, isn't it? Well, Franklin, and now he wants to bet. I mean, I don't know well, what. Well, now, if Gamilla bets now. I don't know what Franklin if, if does. Gamilla, I was going to say, if Gamilla bets there, it, it feels like three queens, right? I mean. Well, I, Franklin's just baffled. I mean, Franklin turns the flush draw. But he kind of does. He wants to bet, but then kind of doesn't because, like you say, it he looks want to like get three, bet off. Yeah, this. it looks like three queens. Okay, yeah, exactly. He doesn't want to get bet off it, and he's thinking. But you have to bet. You have to bet. I guess so. Yeah. Well, it's I only guess. jack high. I guess you do, but what do you put Gamilla on? Like ace king, um, air, an air ball? I, I, I don't know. So. Gamilla's having uh, a long the, look. But, but I mean, you, it, but you would think if if uh, if Gamilla has his air balls, he's going to bet. So what does Gamilla have? <clears throat> very, very. Franklin's just shaking his head. He's like, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I very, had to get my hands dirty. I've got mud on my shoes, but I got the pot. I guess Amazing yeah. stuff. There's still five players left. 
one of them going to the final table, and Peter Molbeck feels like a man who's a thousand pounds right now. We are now at the end of three levels, and look at this. Peter Molbeck has 1.4 million in chips, and Anthony Lelouch knocked down to 100,000. What a turn of events at this final table. Join us next time when this first global qualifier final concludes and we find out who wins a seat in the Party Poker Premier League Poker 5 lineup here in Vienna. My time, two times. Oh, very near to push. No point playing anymore. Oh. <laughs>